Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Iberia. I'm your host, Mr. TNO Lover, but minorities debate the status of Iberian and minority languages. The Iberian minority languages are the result of artificial kingdoms and caliphates being slowly integrated into the Castile Aragon, causing the Iberian Peninsula to be a complete linguistic mess where two provinces can hardly communicate with each other without the help of Castilian Spanish. However, many people in these regions cannot communicate in Portuguese as well as they can in Castilian Spanish, and it's slowly turning into a huge issue as both Spain and Portugal lean ever closer together. Salazar has demanded that Franco change official languages in each region in order to accommodate the new status of Portugal, with the Portuguese language being enforced in regions such as Catalonia and Euskadi, just like the Castilian Spanish. Franco's disagreed, arguing that such a move would only cause a regionalist movement to spark back to life, each of them trying to claim the same linguistic rights as Portugal. The debate has ultimately ended with a tie, of course, with the mainland's linguistic success goal being preserved. More good luck from the Cadillos! I love it! But I didn't read this last time. We're going to read across the pond again. Please go right ahead as we're visiting America. But then we'll go our Latin American friends. Uh, I think I read this one too last time, perhaps as well. Uh, yeah, if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. And then we'll read uh, non Italian Catholics. Our shared adherence and commitment to traditional Catholic values gives us a close link to our former allies and the Italians. With them out of the picture, we should look to other nations which hold the same values as we that we still hold dear. Our foreign ministry has suggested Ireland and France is a particularly good target for diplomacy. Despite their membership of the Hadrian and Einheit's Pact, we can play on the cultural and religious ties with Germany and its megalomania and cowardice in the face of Burgundy as Washington. If nothing else, this will help us gain further insight into the machinations of the German alliance. We are, however, hopeful that the connections we do hold will give us a chance to deepen our relationships with the two Catholic European nations. Italy wins, darn it. We gave stuff to the Turks, but status of Rio de Oro. Rio de Oro has been a colony of Spain for quite some time now, and it's currently the oldest known foreign territory of a country. While well, the creation of the Union set back the integration of Rio de Oro into Spain proper, the lack of native opposition, and the swift progress of infrastructure works in the region have made Franco confident that it could be easily incorporated into the Union as a proper state. This, however, did not sit well with Salazar. The area is mostly Spanish speaking, with the introduction of the Portuguese being very recent and very limited. Salazar featured fears that Franco's plans to incorporate the colony directly into Spain proper, and once again force Spanish hegemony over the rest of the region. Oh. Having all his integration proposals blocked off by relentless styles, our Franco has decided to refrain from integrating Rio de Oro until the province is able to be integrated under joint administration between Portugal and Spain. I guess that does it for now. Oh, uh, you guys. Ah, that's what I want to do. Go to consolidate so we have spend less money and we have enough guns. Because over here, I forgot that we still need to do with uh, the Dominican Republican stuff. So, Senate Army Engineers, which is okay, but even Germany's benefits, not us for some reason. Um, I don't understand that. Uh, arms shipments, which is okay, but I don't want to do that either. I invite all of the officials to the MFC party, which we could do, but we might not get anything out of it. Okay, we'll do it anyway. It's just a little bit of that. Follow the opposition's paper trail. Increase operational strength by four. Uh, Manpower goes down by 500. Uh, we, have, we really don't have political power. Spy. OFN embassies and Ciudad Trujillo. Hope I'm saying that right, too. 30% chance for 50. Increase operational strength by one. One or four. Well, four is obviously a better choice. And down here... Um, there's more support, it looks like, for Franco, I suppose, uh, than anything else. Some majority. I don't want more conservatism. Um, but like I said, we do have some comments to go through as well. Ch what's in the church's opinion, eh? The church leans towards Franco. And military is... And we just uh, fully Franco aligned. We can piss off the military probably a little bit. Okay, why not? Um, at the same time, though, the Jerusalem Conference. We do have quite a few comments to go through, and many of you were surprised that I actually started playing this campaign. But that's okay. It, rebellion and pending. Oh, crap. The force has been receiving training near Mayari and the Nipe in Cuba. The Caribbean Legion appears to be wrapping up its preparations. Training programs within have seen a reduction in intensity, and increasing shipments of military equipment have been noticed in and around the camps in recent weeks. Beyond this, statements from several high-ranking figures within Cuba have seen an increase in focus on the Dominican Republic with clear hostile remarks. Action by insurgent cells within coastal regions of the Dominican Republic have also increased in intensity, even as counterinsurgency action increases. Uh oh. We predict that at the current rate, an attack against the Dominican Republic will occur no more than two months, and likely sooner, in order to counteract this. It's highly recommended that we make our own preparations. Several contingency plans have already been drafted for your consideration. Planning of the shock team, along to the introduction of a heightened presence of special forces from our own military, and of equipment from our stockpiles, and in addition, moves to undermine enemy intelligence have been made of late, though little has come from this at the present moment. The fight for Hispaniola still looms. Still want to show it? That would be nice. Cross upon. Very good. Impact of the economy. In a passionate feud over the time-honored Spanish tradition, Franco and Salazar erupted into a debate over the impact that the famed siestas have on Iberia's consistently poorly performing economy. Salazar argues that the net hours loss is time that if used could significantly boost Iberia's productivity and that they are a severe detriment. Franco responded with expected anger, refusing to concede and insist that the effects are negligible compared to the cultural importance. The feud ended in a typical stomach. How is this relevant? Visiting America. 
Despite the relatively cold feelings of those across the Atlantic, it is important that we begin to take the steps towards creating a more amicable relationship in the future. With the triumvirate at having broken apart, we must look outwards to find new trade partners as well as cementing our positions as a real competitor to the Italians and Turks. Our first priority is to uh, meet with the representatives of the Organization Free Nations. Making trips overseas personally to discuss trade relations and improve upon our uh, <clears throat> image in the eyes of both the government and the public, of course. Uh, Cadillo Francisco Franco has made the final preparations and is ready to begin forging a new path for Iberia's future. The first stop on the Cadillo's tour is head to the D.C., capital of uh, the United States and the epicenter of the OFM. From there, he shall begin our, our tour throughout the Americas and hopefully find new friendships. Let's go! That's a me, a Franco. Cadillo in the capital. I'm sure it's. Well, oh, sabotage guerrilla groups. Okay, why not? See, that's why I consolidate these groups, so they'll be really good. Well, let's see. For one. Oh, I'm so close. Ah, I'll do it anyways, why not? Upon his arrival, Franco was greeted with a large procession of American and Iberian flags with a huge crowd having gathered uh, to observe the occasion, of course. Ah, I'll do that too. Why not? We're going to probably do all these anyways. Um, uh, procession of American and Iberian flags with a huge crowd having gathered to observe the occasion. Stepping out from the plane, a marching band struck up a beautiful rendition of the Iberian National Anthem and first seen the uniformed men of the United States Army stood side by side with a handpicked on a guard of the Iberian military. There, in front of hundreds of cameras and thousands of cheering spectators, Franco shook hands with none other than President Richard Nixon for the first time. Both Iberian and American leaders met in person, the historic moment being broadcast live on TV at both networks on both nations. After the uh, photo opportunity, Franco rode in a grandiose motorcade through the streets of D.C., where several short tours were conducted for before finally coming to the White House lawn. A final old photo op was held, and both the Cadillo and the President made their uh, way inside to begin discussions regarding the future relations between Iberia and America. President Military? Talk about business. Ooh, ooh, growth. Ooh, I like that a lot, growth. President military, improve foreign leaders' opinion. Ooh, I like how this has implications. Foreign leaders lean toward us, or businessmen lean towards Hellazar. Talk about business. I want that growth. Ah, businessmen don't have a preference now. That's good. This is not good. Uh, military stuff is still not bueno. But uh, Portuguese siestas, the two highest echelons of Iberia's heartily functioning government, became embroiled in yet another endless argument for Franco and Salazar, sparred over expanding official support for workplace siestas in the Portuguese regions of Iberia. Salazar insisted that there was no need for such an unproductive and senseless cultural tradition to be brought into Portugal. But Franco argued to be a positive change in, in policy for the nation. Salazar was baffled, and categorically refused to concede as the argument ended as Cadillo's views normally do indecisively. So many better things to discuss. Oh, I forgot to also increase uh, here, this thing too. I love water. As we have some coffee here too. Um, we'll see if that works. The Great White North. The trip to DC has gone smoothly. Francisco Franco said his goodbyes to Americans and climbed aboard his plane once again, this time to fly northwards and meet with the Canadian government. There, the Cadillo was met with similar pomp and circumstance, although this time the tour of Ottawa was cut short, as the Prime Minister hoped to get down to business as soon as possible. A long speech was given by the Cad Canadian PM once Franco settled in at Parliament Hill, giving praise to Cadillo for taking the time to meet with Canada on a personal basis. Despite the warm greetings, and personally, oh crap, oh, nope, we're good, uh, and generally friendly attitude, there was something uh, that had been plaguing the trip to Canada since uh, the Cadillo's arrival. One of the major concerns for maintaining a friendship with the Canadians was the ongoing struggle between the Quebecois. Quebec independence movement and the Canadian government. The Catholic bond is strong, and the Cadillo was reminded to take careful steps in choosing how to best approach the issue. Condemn terrorism? Ooh, talk about business. Oh, heck yeah. Darn it, we're still at 96. Dang it, that stuff didn't happen. Patrol the coast. 50% um, chance our operational strength will increase by 2, 50% chance their supply will decrease by 5, and their strength will decrease by 4. That's absolutely necessary to do. Okay, so now we're at 100. Nice. Regulation time. The Cadillos of Iberia have erupted into a furious argument once again, this time dealing with the time zone difference between Spain and Portugal and the establishment of a maximum siesta time. Uh, Salazar insisted that the siestas, primarily in Spain, needed a maximum cap to try and limit the economic effects of siestas. Franco countered this by retorting that economic growth could also be streamlined if Iberia were to adopt a uniform time zone rather than keeping the current two. The argument went nowhere as the two men simply continuously repeated their arguments and were unable to come to any sort of agreement. It shouldn't be that difficult, but our frenemies. Historical animosities kept our relationship with the peoples of England and Scotland distressingly sour for far too long. Perhaps now that the United Kingdom has been dissolved and its member states humbled into submission, we can start res or restart diplomacy on different terms. Visits to the islands certainly will not harm our standing as long as we seek to remain neutral or respectful, not overstepping boundaries imposed by cultural differences. Bettering our relations and perhaps increasing the strength of our ties between our nations could put another thorn into Germany's side and give us additional European connections to use against our former triumvirate allies. Visiting Latin America. Latin America, of course, is a region that is often ignored by the global powers, of course. Uh, but uh, Cadillo Franco has insisted that we shall not make the same mistake. Iberia is deeply and ethnically tied to the region and our influence, ooh, it fails, uh, can be seen all throughout. This puts us in quite a unique position where we come to talking business and diplomacy because of our shared common heritage and thank God that we won't have to use this, use translators anymore. 
One of the main uh, uh, countries on the agenda are Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, and Cuba, so Franco has a long journey ahead of him. It's important that we solidify our cordial relations with these nations and further economic, economic ties with them for the good of Iberia and the Latin world as a whole. Furthermore, we can utilize our ties with Cuba to gain influence in the open should we want to do so. Let's go! It's my Franco. Mia Franco. Uh, the Lisbon Infrastructure Plan. Planned years ago in 1962, the Lisbon Infrastructure Plan has finally been completed. Lisbon now possesses a sister road to the one in Madrid. Finally, El Rio de la Plata. What is this? Oh. Did they erupt and go kaboom yet? No. They look pretty thick in Dom the Dominican Republic. Their supply will decrease. Uh, can we even see what they have? No. Sabotage supply depots. Any operational strength gains may will be doubled. Well, I'm gonna make sure that we win no matter what, but still. Because I like having 100% strength here. Mm. Uh. Oh, yeah, me too. As part of a Latin American journey, Cadillo Franco has reached the Argentinian capital of Buenos Aires. So obviously as soon as Franco set foot off the plane while Buenos Aires is called the Paris of South America. Whether it is the Palace of the Congress or the Casa Rosada, the beauty of the city is decided to be seen and they frankly have just to thank for it. While traveling throughout the city, the Cadillo engaged with many of the local activities, such as listening to opera and stunningly crafted Teatro Colón and walking through its gorgeous botanical garden, but enough of the pleasantries. Time has come for business and we must decide what the main purpose of our trip is. We can either talk business with the Argentinians in hopes that we can strengthen our economic ties with the country. Or we can meet with local Iberian community leaders. The latter will show Iberians at home that in abroad the Iberian government cares for about them and we can help solidify our regime as protector the Iberian people will arrive. Talk about business. Businessmen? Meet with Iberians there. Sound the majority. Talk business. We need the money. We God dang, we need the money. The Amazon, with well, the business in Argentina concluded, it's time for Franco to go on to Brazil and visit the capital city of Rio de Janeiro. Once a court of the poor Portuguese brothers, Rio somewhat deteriorated since the days of the uh, Bra Braganza dynasty. The slums of call favelas are applied on the city's otherwise beautiful skyline, even though our tour guide kept the Cadillo far away from them, the effect of the city's aura was still measurable. Nevertheless, beauty was still shown in the city with Franco's visit to the impressive Biblioteca Nacional, one of the largest libraries in the world, and the Paso de Sao Cristóvão, the beautifully crafted old imperial palace of the Braganzas. Once the tour concluded, it was time for the Cadillo to decide what the focus of the trip should be. We can either talk business with the Brazilians and meet with President Enrique Texiera, Texiera Lot. Talking business with the Brazilians that has potential to yield many rewards as they are in possession of a vast array of natural resources, but they need an industrial sector to go on with it, and improving trade ties between nations could bring the riches of the Amazon to Iberia once again. On the other hand, meeting with the President would help to improve our diplomatic ties with the Brazilians, which would mean having the most powerful country on the continent and as a potential ally, should we wish to involve ourselves further in South America. I just love the money. They don't care too much, it looks like. Talks break down? Of course. In an uptick from the normal endless debates between Iberia's Caudillos, Salazar took the stop, or step, of suggesting banning siestas altogether, citing the effects it has on Iberia's economic productivity. Franco was outraged by the proposal, and the two soon erupted in a full blown feud. As Salazar repeated his suggestion, the two almost silently came to blows. Uh, despite most likely being sympathetic to their respective national leaders, guards intervened to separate the two leaders, both of whom left in a furious mood. Why do we live just to suffer? Yes, yeah, so this is Spain, also known as pain. Um, defense. Back in Nueva España. Now it's time for Cadillo Franco to visit the oldest capital city in Latin America, Mexico City. Ever since we were rebuilt four centuries ago, Spanish influence can be seen in all areas of the bustling metropolis. Kings are preserved in their statues. Millions of followers visit the cathedral and churches that we built, and the country's elites reside in our palaces. It's through this that we must consolidate our economic ties and continue in a long standing tradition of helping develop the country in a way that helped develop their own too. In spite of this, the presence of the Japanese Ibatsus in the country cannot be understated, and it is because of this fact that we must weigh whether to focus on meeting up with the representatives of these Ibatsus and engage in joint pro uh, projects with them, or whether to meet the local Mexican businessmen to work directly with Mexican firms. The former allows us to utilize more economic economies of scales, as Ibatsus have a larger pool of money to use for their development than the Mexicans, as well as helping us to draw closer to the Japanese should we want to create stronger ties with them, but the latter would mean that we can gain more influence in the country and go further to endear the Mexicans toward us. Either way, we can only focus on one of the two, so it's up to Franklin to make that choice. Liquid reserves. Ooh, points of would be really nice. Uh, talk with Mexican businessmen. Iberian Council Establishment and Need. Today, a series of meetings have begun uh, between the Cadillo, Franco, and Salazar to debate the establishment of an Iberian Council. The first meeting consisted of determining how and why the Iberian Council was created, will be created, and the Cadillos have already disagreed on some things, as is normal. Uh, even though they both agreed that the Council should be small at first and grow with time, 
The growing speed of the council is one of the th few things they disagree with. While Franco thinks growth should be slow so the power, reigns ba power balance remains safe, it doesn't expectively shift hands. Salazar wants the growth to be as quick as possible, to try avoiding the bureaucratic pain the slow growth will cause. Uh, this matter was debated for far longer than expected, but the meeting finally ended. Both Cadillas left the meeting happy because they got agreed on the fact that the Iberian Council was going to be created for the benefit of the Iberian people, even though that was not exactly what they called the meeting for, and no one knows that the establishment debate has been revealed. They agreed on something, so that's, uh, good. Our friend of me scores down in the Cape of Good Hope. Another target for diplomatic outreach program is the nation of South America. The relationship between the people of the Cape and the Germanis is known to be of one frequently tense exchanges. South America may have saved itself through its neutrality, but this is also the largest firmly into the back books of Germany. We'll be able to easily convince some of our sincerity, considering our own issues with the European hegemony. Building ties with the South Africans could hopefully also gain us favor with the rest of the Anglophone world, especially the OFM. It's necessary that all of our actions in the foreign sphere now show that we're ready to distance ourselves from our previous Eurocentric foreign policy. It'll be a vital step in that direction. Visiting other Catholic nations. Well, with the new foreign policy, Iberia uh, focusing on looking outwards, it is imperative that we recognize Italy is not the only Catholic nation in the world, and despite the presence of the Holy See in Rome, we should not act as a sole representative. Instead, Cadillo Antonio Salazar is taking it upon himself to head to Ireland and France to strengthen the bond with Iberia's Catholic brethren. If a player card is right, Iberia may be able to garnish or gently push Italy out of the limelight and take its place as the strongest Catholic nation. Not only will this net a strong relation with Catholic nations as a whole, but also will be seen as a moral victory over the Italians, something which people of Iberia desperately need. Bags back and ready to go. Cadillo Salazar is ready to send off to uh, Ireland and France, hoping to tie the nations closer to Iberia, showing the world that Iberia is a strong, unified, and proudly Catholic nation. Let's let's go. The album out. Home to democratic forces, Savannah is a beautiful city, and due to its proximity ties to America, developing ties with the government could position a, with a good position closer to the OFM. After all, the still Iberians at heart, regardless of political ideology, the city truly is a sight to behold, and like with Mexico City, we can be thankful for that. Franco got the chance to see the city in all of its majesty from atop the uh, Fortazella de San Carlos de la Cabana. Within the city itself, Cadillo Franco did his prayers in Havana's capital, or cathedral, receiving a private viewing of an Alicia Alfonso ballet in the Gran Teatro de la Habana, and got a relaxed and drink coffee in the San Francisco Square. However, the Cadillas did not come to Havana de la Ceci, but rather to establish Iberia's new foreign policy, Franco could either meet with Castro and seek to establish diplomatic ties with Cuba, or meet with the most influential church leader in Cuba. It would meet with Castro would help align us with the OFN, should we choose to do so, and could open up economic opportunities with the Cubans. However, if we met with the church, it would be sent to all faith, although we look after Catholics worldwide and help improve the opinion of the government from the more zealous members of our society. Castro? Meet the church. Ah, Castro it is. Iberian Council Debate. Representation. One of the hardest issues when it comes to the reform formation of the Iberian Council is who is represented there and how they should be represented, and as with most things, Franco Salazar have different opinions on the matter. Franco stated that the council should be based on what he considers are the three natural parts of society. Family where one is born, the town where one lives, and the syndicate where one works. Salazar opposed this and, uh, and said proposed that the council should be filled with members chosen with a pyramidal, uh, pyramidal system. Franco's difficulty to understand Salazar's unique choosing method together with Salazar's frontal denial of Franco's proposal made sure that the meeting lasted, of course, much longer than it needed to be. After much explaining, Franco finally understood Salazar's system, which then he vetoed before calling off the meeting. <laughs> Both Cadillos say that they're very close to choosing a system, but not a word was said regarding representation for the regions like Catalonia, Galicia, the Basque Country. Can you explain Salazar's system again, please? The Emerald Isle, arriving in Dublin, Ca Cadillo Salazar was first met by a parade of Irish and Iberian soldiers. Parading side by side, the head of the procession being led by numerous bishops from both nations, a brief photo op was held between the Cadillo and the Irish president before both men quickly were whisked away to the Parliament House to, in to meet in private. Uh, here at Salazar and, Pro and President de Val Valera both began discussing the future of relations between Iberia and Ireland. Even with the warm relations between the two nations, both of the they shared back religious background and similar diplomatic situation, the situation of the Ulster Saloons. Officially, Iberia remains supportive of other Irish claims in the region, although there are some believe that the Cadillo should take careful steps not to draw too much attention to it, as it could incite further violence between Protestants and Catholics, regardless. The economic, battle, uh, the economic benefits of Irish and Iberian friendship are obvious, and both men are ready to tie the two nations closer together than ever before. Condemn terrorism. Business. Business, man. Business. Business. The northern neighbor. After spending most of the time in Dublin, the meeting with numerous religious officials in Ireland, Salazar made his final preparations to head to Paris. Several special measures were taken as to not draw that ceremony to greet the Cadillo. The parade was made up of only Iberian honor guards. The French were careful to meet with the Burgundian demands. Shortly after, nothing spectacular. The Cadillo staff scurried him away towards a more secure area of Paris to meet with the representatives of the French government. Despite everything. 
Meeting with the French woman went swimmingly. A wonderful state dinner with several photo opportunities had managed to raise everyone's spirits, and several impromptu speeches were made to the people of France and Iberia. Now, however, Salazar is faced with either continuing his meetings with the French in order to strengthen the trade relations or to begin approaching at church leaders to gather their support for future Iberian endeavors. With the Burgundians breathing down the necks of the French, the could you only time to meet with one or the other. Uh, Salazar, huh? So Salazar, colonial settlers love him. The church leans towards Franco, a settler majority. Doesn't have a preference. Stability or political power? Stability. Ah, oh, housing and building. Iberia has a lot of build beautiful buildings and locations full of history and meaning, but sadly, only one place can host the Iberian Council, of course. As with most things, the Cadillos are deeply divided of the matter. Oh crap, there we go. Franco proposes his own residence, the Royal Palace of El Pardo should be the meeting place, but then Salazar then proposes his own state to host the council. This conversation was then transformed into an argument to see whose residence was better. Oh, look at that. Um, uh, before turning into an, uh, a string of insults to the others. The matter was finally dropped and the debate moved to the, to the proposals of hosting the council in either the Palacio de la Costes or the Sao Bento Palace, with each proposal being defended by Franco and Salazar respectively, and followed a pattern similar to the private residence proposals, arguing which one is better before deciding to insult the other building. The meeting was caught up, but both Cadillo said that they were still analyzing options. The only thing that this meeting left clear was that the El Pardo has been seeing be has better plumbing, while Sao Bento has less leaks. How about meeting in a different place each time? Why not? The Puerto Plata invasion. Oh boy. I'll show the American puppets who's really in charge. Oh, that's not good. Can I see volunteers? Oh, bro, that sucks. Bio. Corrupt. Cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan Brotherhood. Uh, Rebels of Fortune. That actually really, sounds really cool. Uh, Inter Eternal Sectarianism. Sterity Supply Lines. Holy crap, look at that attack and defense. Over here, you have Dios e Trujillo. Trujillo. Blancamiento. Modernizing the military. Espanol in conflict. Significant revolts. Very bad. USAF bombings. Oh, God. And enemy bombing drones. That's. Holy sh. Yeah, because they have speed and defense. Emergency supply drops. Wartime psyop campaigns. Iberian air sorties. Devote intelligence to counterinsurgency. Hmm. I'm gonna do that one. I don't mind spending some command power for this stuff. I don't want to save my old stuff though. I'll drop by ten. So be it. Whatever. Visiting the British Isles. Uh, this is the game of politics the show must go on. The journey for greater foreign relations has brought the eye of a beer northwards towards the island of Great Britain. To the Senate, an official state visit with Cadillo Salazar to England and Scotland have been scheduled. If everything goes as planned, we'll leave it with more context to our north. It effectively beats the prize visit, but not without a short warning in advance to make sure the reception is prepared, everything is ready, and all that remains is to send the order to fly over. Let's go. Journey to the east. In search of our further nations, which we may be able to develop better relations with, we have come to Eastern Europe, a region particularly ravaged by the German menace, Hungary. A staunch former ally of the Rock was offered up as a simple prey to the Romanians. Furthermore, the economy was utterly ransacked by the economic crash of the 50s. Romania fared a little better. Yet the animosity created by the territorial disputes and a bitter robbery leaves the two nations weak and too divided to stand against possible future German encroachment. If we were to open diplomatic channels, we may be able to strengthen both their position and ours by removing some of the hazards of isolation in this foreign sphere. Even if I do attempt to act like it doesn't, not, like almost nothing. Oh, this is so bad. The Fallen Empire. After a mostly calm fly, Salazar found himself in London. Most of the city was in questionable shape, and it was between the bodyguards and other security precautions. It was best to be somewhere between there wouldn't be so much attention. Somewhere where there wouldn't be so much attention. The wealthier heirs were the best to be, uh, as they were the least touched by the country's ongoing economic troubles. A little while was set aside to relax, as even though the depressing atmosphere there was undesirable or undeniable quaintness in certain areas of London. There was no time to dally, and so Salazar found himself needing to attend to the real reasons for his visit. However, this isn't enough time of the day for everything. Either the Cadillac could take the intended action of properly meeting with the Prime Minister Alec Douglas Holm to discuss diplomatic ties or use the meeting to focus on business matters. It wouldn't have the same potential payoff of a friend in England, but it could provide economic opportunities. We'll go with strength and diplomatic relations. Ah, uh, but some cops include. They removed Alan Tropa? Yes, they did. No more Gibraltar Dam. Uh, see, someone else says, Spanish nationals seeing how there's not a base path and the most near thing is military and status quo path to Iberia. Pretty much. Someone says, finally, when you end this campaign, please do Brazil. Someone says, I'm banking on a democratic Iberia, but however it turns out, probably going to be another great series on the channel. Thank you for the comments, yes. Um, someone says, will you go for reformers or Francoists? We'll probably go for reformers, which I did do last time, but I kind of went with AP, AG, what was it? I think last time I went with 
Uh, Fraga. I did go Fraga last time, so we're not going to go Fraga this time. Someone keeps asking me to go Torcuato, Fernandez, Miranda, so we'll probably try to go we'll try to go that path. There's no guarantee, but, you know, that's one of my goals, which is another question uh, or another comment from uh, one of you Vito guys. Vito Powers. Every Iberian knows that Cadillos tend to vote to each other's decision, or vetoes each other's decisions, even the most trivial ones, something that is used by underground publications as satires or figures and for the common people to make jokes about. This veto situation was a matter debated to debate today for the formation of the Iberian Council. Franco proposed that the veto power should be reserved for himself and Salazar, but Salazar unsurprisingly said no to this and proposed that a proposal could only be vetoed if the number of members of the council who voted or decided to veto it was higher than the number of those who didn't want to veto it. Franco then refuted Salazar's argument, asking those members who voted blank would be simply ignored. The spiral out of control and ended up being a heated philosophical debate of what was a veto and whether a veto could be nullified if it was discovered it was motivated to harm the Iberian people rather than help them. At the end, nothing was agreed on, so we must expect the veto powers to remain in the hands of the Cadillos, at least for now. So then what constitutes a veto? The Highlands. Onward to Scotland. Cadillos uh, Salazar came straight from London, landing in Edinburgh to considerably warmer reception as someone who had taken the care to properly notify them about the Iberian diplomatic mission. Things were clearly more stable around the city than London. With a generally calm atmosphere, Salazar spent some time on a tour as well as attending to some minor matters. For a long time slipped away and once again not everything could get done by the end of the day. A few journalists who came along on the trip expressed their desire to meet with the Scottish High Command, allowing them to bond over the various discussions and potentially foster friendly relations for the future. Let's tell time, time, time to meet if we act quickly. Alternatively, Salazar could meet and formally discuss business, which would create the possibility of looking at trade. Business? Uh, military leaders. Uh, fully Franco aligned. Talk about business. It's fine. Fully Sal Franco. Mostly Salazar. Mostly Sal fully, fully Salazar. And most don't have a preference of whoever. I guess we could try to do that too. Point 11 is not great. Ah. And we'll do Journey of the East like we read earlier. Lords of Arabia. The Middle East is a region filled with many inhabited opponent and angry detractor of the Italian Empire and Sertian Turks. With both of our former allies abandoning the triumvirate, it only seems fair that now we make use of these tensions to weaken the position in case the currently cool relations develop into something more sinister. One particular focus is Arabia, a feudalistic state united by the Saud clan. The country has seen tremendous economic growth and discovery of large oil deposits, which have made it a target of many diplomatic missions. We should also move quickly to build up our own relations with the aristocracy of the shifting sands and spreading oil. It could uh, greatly ben be beneficial to our economy and hence national security. If we are able to gain favorable terms of oil trading, we can not fall beyond other Mediterranean powers, visiting South Africa. For the time being, the Iberian outreach in Europe is finished and it is time to expand. Our horizons take a trip further south into the jungles of Africa. South Africa is a sole priority due to its unique position between the Oven and Einheit's back. Salazar will have to be careful as the country is a hotbed of tensions between the ruling Anglo aristocracy, the Boers, and the disenfranchised native population. Furthermore, the internal conflict is amplified at the global stage by the support given to the Boers by the Arx Commissarias to the north, setting South Africa to be a potential stage of proxy war between the Rock and the USA. And through this, the Cadillo Salazar must use a diplomatic skill to navigate the political landscape of South Africa, whether that be by standing with the government's current position or by, by lobbying for reconciliation. Let's go! God dang, this sucks. Boers, natives, and British. Oh god. As part of our new foreign policy, Salazar is planning to reach Cape Town, the capital of South Africa, as the Cadillo moves throughout the city. Divisions that lie within. Uh, oh crap, that's not good. Uh, within can be seen almost immediately. The difference between the gorgeous architecture of the city hall compared to the squalor the native Africans are subject to is overwhelming. As Salazar meets with the nation's richest businessmen, most powerful politicians, and most influential community leaders, a feeling that would not subside is that South Africa was a nation by and for the Anglos regardless so of the government's position that this was the best situation for the Boers and Africans. However, Iberia seeks diplomatic reasons, and so must take a decision whether the Union will officially recognize the South African government, or whether to call for reconciliation between the three factions at odds. If we recognize a government, it could grant us further ties with the OFN and help us position ourselves with them in the Cold War. On the other hand, though, Kick off our reconciliation and hope that's with enough pressure. The government could open up its government to the Boers and Africans. Kick off for reconciliation. Lisbon train station roof collapses. Tragedy struck. Lisbon and David, the roof of the Cade uh, Sodra railway station collapsed unexpectedly right as one passenger train was being loaded and another unloaded. 49 people were crushed to death and another 69 injured. Cadillo. Salazar insisted on seeing the wreckage himself and working with the agents on the ground to help coordinate the relief effort. A preliminary investigation quickly found that multiple support platforms had been removed in the course of the recent construction work at the station. In response to the disaster, Salazar ordered a review of construction safety requirements to prevent such a disaster from occurring again. This also has severely disrupted transportation in Portugal's larger city, and for thousands of workers to find new routes to the workplace at least for the next few weeks. A terrible tragedy, of course. Hopefully the DR does uh, win. Totally didn't do any funky stuff off screen to make sure that they do well, though. Totally didn't. Why do we work on poverty here, man? This sucks. Like, the economy is going to explode or implode eventually, which is something I don't want to have. And I know we're going to have crisis eventually, but, like, bruh, still. Visiting the Balkans. Oh, God. In the world, there are two major main groups the influencer and the influence. 
While the influencer often holds more power, the influence can play around this to the benefit and to the detriment of their neighbors. This behavior is best observed in the Balkans, where countries have feuded with one another for centuries. Some are better at the game than others, and have their independence to show for. Kadu Salazar believes it's time for Abir to participate in the game. There are few countries not yet dominated by the two powers who contest in the region. Germany and Italy, and creating ties with these independent countries will be important towards the new foreign policy. Let's go! Dealing Calcutta. Far away from our own shores lies a landmass full of such a large populace and so many economic opportunities that has captivated European interest for much of its history. The extensive trading networks that span across the Indian Ocean were such of vital importance to our forefathers that they even sailed around Africa and attempted to find a western passage with time. The focus of global economic activity has shifted, but this has not reduced the great importance of the trade routes which the Indian subcontinent has perfect access to. As hence then decided, they wish to seek to meet representatives from both the national Indian government and the competing Azad Hind. Both states lay claim that there would be a legitimate ruling force in which India has created a potential rivalry which may be able to make use of. Officially, we have not recognized either government, therefore we could seek to maximize potential gains by ascertaining which other regimes would be better partner in the future. Akadiyo in Hungary. Akadiyo Salazar found himself in Budapest, meeting with a modest but dedicated group who had arrived to receive him. To receive him. The ambassador and his entourage were friendly enough and offered a tour of the Hungarian capital to be to polite. Salazar gladly accepted. The historical sites were impressive, and it's clear the Hungarians leaned on their legacy for its sightseeing value. As long, after a long while, the tour was concluded. It took him far longer than anticipated, and the only limited amount of time remained before the state visit was over. It was planned that there would be both discussions about commercial and trade affairs, as well as more publicized meeting between leadership to be leveraged for public relations. While the opening for a true meeting is past, there's still time to discuss business. If trade deals are not particularly enthusing, then it would be, still be possible to praise the Hungarian government in order to thaw their eyes for later relations. Talk about business. Uh, foreign leaders' opinion, huh? Foreign leaders... Don't have preference. Businessmen don't have a preference. Oh, 0.2 billion. Uh, Intermania. Oh. I'll give you that one right now. Oh, Salazar is a high command. Goes to Morocco. Talk to bishops. Um, we're still doing that, but whatever. Sway bureaucrats, huh? Businessmen, bureaucrats are mostly Salazar are aligned. Intellectuals don't care. Uh, I want businessmen. I still want more businessmen towards uh, them. In Romania, after a short flight to uh, Bucharest, Salazar is left to enjoy the sights. Being eager to get to business, he quickly moved uh, on with the trip's agenda, press relations, miscellaneous meetings, and were occupied by the Cadillo's day, the most important. Oh, look at that council. Look at that. It's really nice. Um, uh, and more occupied by the Cadillo's day, the most important of these letter actions was arranging a higher-up meeting on short notice in order to strengthen diplomatic ties. It was only a matter of killing time until then. Once the time comes, there will be no time to delay, though. There needs to be a concise, pre-planned plan discussion. There's two proposals taking the spotlight. The meeting can either be about business and trade, establishing further economic ties, or the meeting could be with the king himself. When that's economically is profitable, the more personal touch of walking with the king can serve to break the ice, creating the groundwork of further relations. Talk about business. Meet with the king. Choosing a stage, and better address the economic situation in Iberia, the Cadillos have opted to host a discussion for business leaders in order to encourage cooperation with the government. Because of this talent for speech and the predominantly Spanish makeup of the business leaders, Franco is the obvious choice for the job. Hosted at the Western or Weston Palace Hotel in Madrid, the function is primarily for business leaders and brought to their attention specifically. Even though they are the main target, it's not yet too late to hold this speech in a public area. The two locations that are mostly easily secured for a summit, the main stage of Weston Palace or in a private undisclosed location. Hosting a speech somewhere, while well, private will be an easier job to secure, as well allowing for only businessmen to be present. That way they can be better catered to. The only threat here is, uh, is of leaks. Alternatively, the speech could be made public for a larger crowd. This will eliminate any risk of someone compromising secure conversations or prevent any unpleasant ac accusations about the loyalty of the Cadillo. It will cost more to secure the public location, and the speech will have to be brought in tone. Otherwise, some groups could be lost by catering to others. The obvious choice is to hold the speech and say, Ooh, crap. Hmm. That's all the this main stage, because we can. Choosing a posture for the speech. Also, this doesn't go well, then oh well. Oh, so how can hands. A location has been selected and announced in said stone. Frank will be speaking to a large audience and marketing his ideas to the public and not just businessmen. There's no time to forget who this is dedicated to, however, just because the speech is more public doesn't mean it isn't for businessmen first and foremost. To this end, a new strategy must be devised. No speech is complete without posturing and can be ruined by the improper application of it. It needs to be decided on how the Cadillo will present his ideas to this audience as to best ensure retention among the businessmen. The first and most obvious tone is to take of someone in favor of a free market. I'm sure to win over many business owners, as the promise of an environment suited to them is one tantalizing enough that they are sure to be lured in. While this may anger some elements of the government, this can be mostly mitigated by a more conservative position of businesses. Alternatively, it has been proposed to take a tough stance on the corporations, asserting authority over them. If there's anything they will respect as a leader, that will want to take executive authority. What form will the Cadillo's tone take? Free market posture. Liberal conservatism. Uh, a business friendly but conservative posture. Worse than the businessmen. A strong authoritarian, authoritarian posture. Conservative posture. Well... Fraga, huh? We don't want that one. Oh, look at liberal conservatism. Opus die. 5%, huh? We want liberalism. A free market posture. 
Ah, Francisco Franco, you are now more aligned. Oh, greater influence than the Salazar. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that actually was possible. More division, attack, and defense, recovery rate, population factor, division training time. Look at that. Ah, the businessman now leaned toward us, which is pretty cool. Salazar, handsome guy. So much for a father like son. Ah! Trujillo defeats the Caribbean Legion. As the Caribbean Legion landed in Puerto Plata, the most predicted that Trujillo's regime would collapse in a matter of weeks, and then days. Bodies now pile up nationwide, but these belonging to those became enemies of the dictator, not his loyalists. As the last exiles either surrender or escape, the greatest challenge of Trujillo has been seen off. The failed attack on the islands left the Caribbean Legion broadly crippled, with most riding off the last survivors quietly escaping across the Haitian borders a little more than a sideshow. This failure has humiliated both the U.S. and Cuba, not only as they have submitted the presence of a hostile fascist power in the Caribbean, but now they have to bend to the well for the sake of the prisoners of war now inside Trujillo's dungeons. Hispanic unity can conquer any foe. Do we get anything from that? No? Yes? No? Oh, man. Delhi, Calcutta. Nice. And then, uh, the Saudis. Uh, Riyadh. I never know how to pronounce it. Riyadh? A uh, relatively small city in some ways made it look nice while creating a great for function elsewhere. What Kazuya Franco learned was that much like Iberia itself, midday was hot, seemingly hostile to life. It was no place fit for staying outside in for sure, as he took some time off for a siesta inside the, in the formal environment. The people were as warm as the environment outside. Various affairs, as tedious as they were numerous, filled the day's schedule for far, too far for Franco to properly enjoy the day. As any day drags on, there's still time to prepare the greatest meeting of the evening. Saudi oil would undoubtedly be a worthwhile trade in discussing business in depth to could help securing an advantageous deal. However, relations could be improved by the classic tactic. Flattery. By praising the monarchy, things could warm up between the leadership of, leadership of both Saudis and Iberia. Business? Praise the government. Yeah, we're going to do this one. The Eastern Hegemon. The Second World War had two great victories, the German Reich and the Japanese Empire. Both of them had success in terrorism and imperial consolidation, two former co-belligerents, however, grew apart in their ambitions. This caused a considerable strain in the relations. It would be foolish to not make use of such a great opportunity, though. We therefore should look to visit the Eastern Hegemon and some of the more important puppet regimes, such as the Chinese. Increasing our connections with the sphere may help improving both our trade situation, while also possibly paving the way for better military ties and go down under. The oil fan alliance is not just limited to the Western Hemisphere. With a multitude of our diplomatic missions traveling east into Asia, it only makes sense that we also build up a relationship with the Australian nation. And in a similar vein to other nations, this could allow us to better or further pursue closer ties with the democratic bloc as a whole. In addition to this, if we could easily uh, could establish good relations, we may be able to create a good trading partnership. Australia is home to a wealth of natural resources, a lot of industries, which support a military industrial complex, of course. And Japan is still busy, of course, killing everyone in its, in its wake. Which is, you know, normal for them. It's time for Franco to visit the Indians of Continent, and unlike uh, Columbus, he would actually make it there this time. There are opportunities to abound on the subcontinent and, and to have an ally who has access to the natural resources and map of India would greatly strengthen Iberia, uh, or Iberia's diplomatic and economic position. We'll have to make the decision whether to recognize India or a puppet state Azad Hind as a rightful inheritor of the in state of India. India is the stronger of the two, but Azad Hind has the might of the co prosperity sphere behind it, and its support for the government could lead to further diplomatic opportunities with Japan. Of course, at the same time, we could choose not to recognize either one of them and carry on our policy neutrality. Yeah, of course, let's go. 5.6 is getting worse. Asia's last democracy. Godzilla Franco had reached Delhi, a city seemingly bursting with life and with wealth and prosperity, but at least that's how it looked from a government approved tour. Franco uh, looked down, or quickly tired of the pleasantries of motion to get on with the agenda at hand. The Indian delegation argued passionately about why Iberia should support them, but it's difficult to tell whether the passion derived from most of the love of India or hatred of the traitor's dudes in. Uh, as I did. But for Franco, lies, two options. We could definitely say that Iberia will recognize the great Indian Republic, or we can nod along to what they say and make some vague promises before making a beeline to Calcutta. A visit to Calcutta would mean throwing away any chance of getting the Indians on side, but Franco has been meaning to try a real Calcutta Veriani. Well, we're going to reform it, so we're going to go officially recognize them. That which means they're going to not like us. Let me tell you what, they don't they will not like us at all. Visiting the co prosperity sphere with business in India concluded. It's time for Cadillo Franco to go for the East and establish Iberia's foreign policy in regards to the greater East Asian co prosperity sphere. Since the last of the Portuguese colonies, all those years ago, Iberian presence in the Far East has been limited, however. Given the emerging markets that reside within, it's imperative that we return. There's much work to be done and so little time to do it, but Franco can and will maintain and forge diplomatic economic ties in the Pacific. Our mutual hatred of Germany means that fostering relations with the GX is top priority. While there may be some animosity towards the Japanese and their occupation, 
of our former colonies of massacres of Iberian citizens in the Philippines is a new Iberia, and we tend to show it. Let's go and dead end. For a simple case, the paperwork seemed to tower a little too high on the inspector's desk. Neither the missing girl nor the servant servant have been found in embarrassment of the Valladolid Municipal Police. Looking at a particularly big pile of paper on his side, grabbing it, he strode purposely to the sergeant's desk who had accompanied him on the night of the investigation. He dropped the batch with a playful wink and continued to pass the seething officer towards an entirely different animal. Bracing himself, he opened the glass panel door to the superior's office. Oh, Inspector Great Timing is just by my secretary. I have been receiving some rather ple pleasant calls from the missing girl's family. Uh, have you gotten any further with the case? The overweight man sat down in the far side of the room and observed the entrance with an unconcealed fury. Clearly, he already knew the answer. No, sir, replied uh, the inspector quietly. That certainly is a terrible shame. The trouble is I cannot justify uh, such funding for the investigation anymore if this is the case. For a moment, the inspector's vision was clouded by a red mist as his body fell into the welcoming abyss of fury. How do you expect me to produce any results? Do you even know how many people I have had to question how much paperwork this case requires? You sit here making demands while I'm trying to figure and find two missing people. The man, fat man's fury finally erupted as he heaved his great body forward on his chair. <clears throat> You have the audacity to stand up to your superior's decision making? Who do you think you are? You owe me your position. Go home and come back tomorrow with a different attitude, or you do not, have to er do not ever have to come back to work again. With this, he shooed the inspector out of his office and reached for the black phone side of the corner of his desk. I need you to open a behavioral observation file on somebody. There's much work to be done, of course. The Empire of the Rising Sun. Franco is playing land in Tokyo, and the crown jewel of Japan, and by extension of all of Asia. The city lives up to its reputation as a hustle and bustle of an army of businessmen way through the economic hub like anchovies of the Mediterranean. As Kadu's car drives through the metropolis, the work ethic of the people of Tokyo is on the present. As a sign of industry, industry clangs throughout the city, while the scent of all sorts of foreign delicacies wavers in the air. Break could get lost in the city, but alas, there was work to be done. We could talk business with the Japanese and further develop economic ties with the powerful Zabatsus in an effort to gather more foreign investment back home. We could meet with Iberian community leaders of Japan and show them that their homeland is not forgotten about them. Many priests and missionaries who came to the site in an effort to convert the local populations so that religious back home would also appreciate this gesture as a symbol of the respect for Iberians and Catholic worldwide. Talk about business. Uh, they lean towards us. Stability, though. Oh, I I want that growth. Point two. Oh. Ooh, I always do growth. Oh, I'll do that one because you get one percent more stability. As Rich leans towards us now, under the heel of the samurai, Franco's plane uh, landing in Beijing, the only potential rival in size and stature of Tokyo, was clearly a different set in the air. The foul smell. Foul scent emanating from the factories blocked the nose as much as pollution blocked the sight. If Tokyo was a city where dreams were made, then Beijing was where dreams went to die as the cold-hearted cogs of progress grinded the populace underneath them. Franco saw uh, what the Japanese occupation had done to the sullen populace, whose faces bore no discernible emotion. Unfortunately, the journey was not for humanitarian efforts, but for business, and so business is all that shall be discussed. Talking business with the Chinese could yield many results as the economic potential for such a large country in terms of population and natural resources could allow Iberian firms to hold on to the cocktails of China's imminent meteoric rise. On the other hand, we could also meet with the Chinese President Gao Zongwu and further establish diplomatic ties with a country that could also be a powerful actor on the world stage. Should the Chinese successfully throw out the chains of Japanese domination, talk about business. Foreign leaders, huh? Don't have a preference. Political power, economy. Oh boy. Everyone knows Iberia. With all of our diplomatic missions across the globe uh, coming to a close, it means that we've finally been able to step out of the shadows of a simple Eurocentric foreign policy. And thus, we've proven that our great union is ready for business and closer ties to many nations around the world. This has proven that the Troyenberg collapse was a blessing in disguise. As much as the anti German bloc was necessary following the intense Hitlerite power plays, there are many more opportunities in the international sphere that we're not able to make use of. We'll not fall beyond the rest of the inward looking Euro Europeans. Our nations want to be taken notice of. Down under, Salazar's plains land in Canberra, which was relatively modest compared to the other great cities of the Pacific, but of still great importance. While the heat may be unbearable, we must pursue on into establishing deeper economic and diplomatic ties with the Austrians as they stand as a major al open ally in the Pacific, and if we get on good terms with them, it can lead to further rapprochement with the rest of the open, and especially America. In our trip, we can focus on talking business with the Australians in spite of the distance between our two nations in order to develop our economic presence in the region. Alternatively, we can meet with the President of Australia, Arthur Caldwell, and establish clear diplomatic policy within the country. Both well, other advantages, furthering economic ties would mean that our investment both to and from our countries would be more diversified. Shooting us from potential crash should any other country we've talked fall into economic crisis, whereas further diplomatic ties could be our gateway to the OFM. Regrettably, we don't have enough time to do both, so solid must aside, talk about business. Move for relations leaders. Ooh, I want to talk about business. But we're not going to that one. I, wonder, I, wonder what's, I don't remember what's next. As I've been consolidating a military rule as much as possible. Cause we well, I need to go down here. This used to have a focus tree, but I wasn't able to get to them uh, fast enough. We're at tornados, and there's these guys too. The wild frontier, unofficial time settlement, ramp banditry, and of course colonial government. Man, I remember the dead with that tree, man. Why? 
That's so much inflation. Honestly, pressure on the present. One more percent more growth. We're gonna focus on inflation. You think it's gonna hurt our growth for a while? Three percent reduction. We have seven percent. Yeah. In ten months, it will be. It reaches best effects. So, so very less than in ten months. So in like 1964, roughly July, roughly July, we should have like four percent inflation, hopefully. Derogisme, which is a French term for something. So we hurt our growth, whatever. 10% effectiveness, hopefully inflation goes down, hurts growth. Military coup in Thailand, oh, hello. Um, everyone knows Iberia. Yeah, good job. Well, what's next? That's a good question. I don't know, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Oh no, Cadillo's debate bombed. Yet another disaster set Iberia. An explosion has gone off in A Coruña. The bombing, believed to be targeted in Franco Salazar and the close allies, nearly avoided the capital and the Iberian government due to the Cadillos being delayed and declaring a lunch break. Several regional separatist groups have declared responsibility for the attack. Ah, oh, crap. Which killed 34 people and wounded nearly 100. However, primary suspicions were directed at a Galician left wing nationalist group within alleged German funding. Galician barbarians. Okay, we've been bombed, but then what? I guess, do we just have to wait for other things to happen? Ah, uh, they announced a reform program. Shaken by the attempts on their lives. Oh no. Hell goes Hitler. The twin Cadillus have announced a new, new program to make Iberia slightly less dysfunctional. Oh, <laughs> sure. Although specific details are murky, rumors are that the old proposal of an old Iberian council to replace the useless legislature is going to be renewed. Some sort of reform is, cl of course, clearly needed. Calling an Iberian council, the Madrid Road debacle has brought to our attention the incompetence and excessively bureaucratic nature of the purely executive decision making system. The following year of inconclusive debates, built to the brim of the vetoes, made it even more clear that any serious decision making was impossible under the current system. Then the Acaruña bombing happened. Galician terrorists nearly killed our beloved Cadillos, a tragedy that would have been surely torn apart the Union. This disaster shocked the Cadillos into action and made them realize that a more stable long-term system of government must be established. As such, uh, an Iberian Council has been devised, serving as a tool to deal with the regional conflicts and help the various states reach agreements, instead of getting bogged down in an endless bureaucratic system or quagmire that was a former system. Yet the nature of the Council is in question. Should we play a pure advisory role or serve in a limited legislative capacity? An advisory Council. Algeria is not suffering a crisis. Oh crap! Amend the Iberian Constitution. Regional representation, huh? The council was formed with only Spain and Portugal in mind, as good deal as intended. However, there's been cries from other regions of Iberia demanding representation in politics. We can ignore their pleas, or we can grab them seats in the council. Now, we've got to figure out which way we got to go. Fair representation. Representatives in name only. Um, it sounds like we should probably go with the puppet legislature. No, maybe not. Controlled opposition. Oh, well, maybe we should. Well, let me double check. representatives to Madrid. The heinous terrorist attack at Al Coruña has led the Cadillos to reevaluate they need the Iberian state. Salazar and Franco have now decided to summon regional representatives to the capital to discuss the creation of Iberian Council to help resolve the issues plaguing Iberia. To then a decision must be made. The proposed council can be given more legislative power. Still under the guidance of the Cadillos, of course, or can act as nothing but a rubber stamp for Franco Salazar. A decisive government or strong legislature. So we're going to go with the power of the Iberian Council, which I think I went last time, but this one is more a despotist path, and I think by uh, more authoritarian. So we want this one. And power of the Iberian Council. A country has long been in a legislative heck for far too long. Veto this, veto that, veto everything. Veto nothing. This needs to end if we want to have any chance of escaping the end this loop. Thankfully, our gracious Cadillos have decided to create a council specifically to handle disorganized internal politics. The Caldeos clarify the council's progress. As the representatives arrive in Madrid and file under the palace of the parliament, armed officers of the Guardia Civil block streets off in preparation for the beginning of the first Iberian council. The Caldeos are expected are both present, standing in uh, sternly in their uniforms. Instead of entering the chamber of deputies, however, the representatives are escorted to a small conference room. Oh, crap. Uh, dispatched by Iberia's small... Uh, it is there that 30 representatives dispatched by Iberia's smaller governments shall be briefed. They are informed of their new duties through distribution of packets of paper, work, hastily stamped with the compromised coat of arms of Iberia, th their duty, and a surprising move by the infamously aloof and detached Cadillos to serve as a new limited Iberian legislature. The answers to nobody but the Cadillos. While it remains unknown precisely what powers they will have, it appears that this will be a significant step forward in resolving the bureau bureaucratic problems that cripple the nation. Hopefully decisions will be made. French refugees pour across the border. We have received several, an urgent message from the mayor of Liv Livia. Following Burgundy's invasion of France, sounds of terrified French nationals have fled southward as to not fall under Himmler's boot. A small Iberian exclave of Livia, with a population above only a few hundred, have now been inundated with no fewer than 4,000 refugees, border officials in the state of Gironda. have opted to temporarily uh, contain refugees in an exclave until receiving orders to either admit them into Iberia proper or deny them entry. Smaller groups of migrants have appeared at other border towns, and even isolated cases of Frenchmen illegally crossing the treacherous Pyrenees Mountains to enter our country have been reported. Immigration to Iberia is virtually unheard of, and border customs are not in any shape to handle a sudden crisis of this magnitude. 
Salazar generally believes that the Iberian government should work to guarantee the safety of the refugees, both due to moral concerns and in order to improve the international image of the Iberian government, however, he shares Franco's concerns that leftist extremists living in France may take advantage of the crisis to infiltrate the country. After all, tens of thousands of Spanish Republicans who fled the country after the Spanish Civil War have taken residence in France. Salazar proposes to organize a small military task to bring refugees to Lisbon as quickly as possible. From there, they may opt for sea transportation to another country, or opt to undergo a vetting process and obtain Iberian residency. Franco believes that this approach carries too many security risks, and so proposes to allow only a limited number of refugees into Iberia to be held in internment camps until they can be thoroughly vetted or until travel to another host country may be arranged. His planning also includes pressuring Andorra to accept any surplus refugees whilst the new arrivals in Iberia process. After hearing the advice of various government ministers, the Iberian could do so due to Salazar's plan. Growth increased by 0.4%. Franco's plan. Get political power, add more debt. Um, I like the growth. 0.4 is not bad. We can go with that one. I don't like less, less, less stuff here, but oh. Curious in an attempt to extend the useful life of the regime, the Iberian Council acts as little more than a puppet legislature. Its job is rubber stamping the laws that the government makes, but the sheer number of council members, 500, makes it more influence, more uh, gives it more influence than the two caduceus originally thought. And so the council, two thought groups have already formed on one side. The so called conservatives or orthodox that believe that Iberia is perfect as is, and on the, uh, the liberals, who also call the reformists, think that reforming the system is the only way Iberia can survive. These two factions clash against each other in the uh, council floor, but the goals will be achieved at least for now. The, current, so the, current, uh, the council is currently very uh, conservative. I mean, the Iberian Constitution. We need to make the Constitution just say exactly what powers the council, ha council has at their disposal. To achieve this, and we'll pass a new fundamental law to ensure the council's power is stable and secure. Opportunities arise in Algeria. Events on the European continent have taken quite a turn within the latest news. We've been given some or solid reports that Burgundian tanks have rolled into France as to sure to be one sided and very short war with France and being further castrated by their Nazi overlords. All claims of French legitimacy to the land of Algeria have disappeared overnight. We all know that they have bigger issues at hand at the moment than to defend from our advances. We have been handed a golden opportunity here. The opportunity does not uh, come around very often, and we would be foolhardy to pass such an endeavor. Moves will have to be made and made fast before anyone else listens up to what's going on here. Plans and meetings will need to be sorted quickly so we can jump on this before any other opportunists. One thing is for certain, though, for the moment, that all right now is for t is for the taking, and there is no limits as to what we can do down in Algeria. We should make every moves in Algeria and ex gladly accept all necessary consequences. Cancel that. Do that one real quick. No. Well, because this was just cancel anyways. Germany in flames. Germany's exploded in the civil war. With factions of the Iberia bicker about the new legislature, we must consider various ways to ensure that the situation will come to our advantage. Maybe we bruise an ill right now, but we'll solve a major power. Tension in Algeria. There has been a vast power vacuum in Algeria for some decades now, just waiting to be filled. Now, the Burgundian invasion of France, this vacuum has grown even wider. Where France is lost in the Burgundian War comes also lost in pretenses of French legitimacy in the region. They're incapable of protecting their own European borders. Never mind those of their colonial belongings. We would be fools to let this ultimate opportunity slip us by and allow Algeria to remain an official French territory, or yet worse, allow it to fall into the hands of our Italian rivals instead. We should lay claim to the region as a rightful part of the Iberian Union. How exactly we shall go about this plan will no doubt be debated extensively in the coming days. Debrief, Jardim. And, oh, my bad. Why, why did that cancel? What the heck? Ooh, yeah, there you go. Wow. In order to go through with the new plans for Algeria, we we'll need to inform Yog Yadim of these latest developments in Algerian policy. He is our main man over down in Algeria and way, and shall need to be kept up with any sudden changes to our advances over the region. Any plan, formulation, or strategy will need to run past him in order to make sure chaos does not reign over Iberian controlled Algeria. These are amongst the most critical moments in our campaign, and thus to put a step wrong now could doom the entire endeavor to a monumental failure. In order to crush a certain calamity, Jadim will need to be thoroughly debriefed. He shall need the knowledge from the debriefing in order to keep this critical time, for if anarchy reigns during the demanding occasion, then all shall be lost before the intervention has ever even begun. Jadim will certainly need to keep on top of things, and we shall do our best to keep him informed of all the latest developments, of course. Africa Shield. More fuel. Emergency meetings. Situation down in Algeria is reading a critical point. Tensions grow by the day and complete, and utter chaos could break at any second. If we wait too long, then our Italian rivals may be able to get the upper hand in order to get, avoid this great tragedy. Emergency meetings between the Cadillas of Iberia and the top elections of the Iberian military will need to be arranged post haste. The reason behind these meetings are simple. Plans need to be arranged and rather quickly in order to gauge on how to best handle the ever growing situation in Algeria. If something isn't provided to us, it will slip from our grasp. But we shall fear not. For our top men are on the case, are on the case to come up with a solution for the Algerian problem. A letter to Jadim, as is normal. Um, let's see. Opportunity to realize the courtesy knock at opportune time for Yog Jadim. Jadim, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. And interrupted a perfectly good breakfast. We're a sensible man, of course. He wouldn't have abandoned his poached egg and toasted bread. 
for the letter apparently rushed to him from Madrid, but unfortunately for him, it was a politician, and such sense was not allowed in this profession. Bright eyes and scanned the letter, observing both the written word and unwritten intent behind them all at once. He stepped from the table to reach the end, his mind already turning over the newfound information. According to the letter, the shadow state was storming into the French Trump state, and to no one's surprise, the French were receiving the worst of the fighting. The French had been more or no less uh, non facto for over a decade, and unable to maintain control of much of the country outside of Algiers itself. That's why they were out here in Oran after all, and the Italians on the other side of the garrison. But the letter was much more vague, with its actual orders and a necessary tactic to maintain plausible deniability, should it somehow fall outside of Iberian hands and cause a scandal. That didn't matter though, they would have, have sent him a letter this without knowing what he'd done, or once he'd do, or what he'd do once he got to reading it, and already he was deep in thought. A spin, Iberia needed a spin to justify the acquisition of Jurio. While yes, militarily occupied by both themselves and the Italians, it was still legally French, and they were in a position to simply take the rest of the country by storm. After all, if they did that, they'd be fighting Italians, not scarecrow the army of the French state. So what excuse could they conjure up that would prevent the Italians from intervening? He sat there deep in thought for some time, running through the scenarios in his head. It was clear whatever scenario or whatever scheme was cooked up, they had to work with the Italians directly to achieve it, so be it they would play this one by ear. It took a bite of his eggs, screaming as he chewed. Opportunity had made his eggs go cold. The plotting has only begun. Always false. Not giving diplomacy a chance will make reformism weaker in the council. I guess we have to go, we, we have to go that way. We'll strengthen reformism. So as much as I want to do this one, we'll, if, we'll do this when we go more despotist and more authoritarian sometimes, so... I do like this one, but Ambassador Moreira's plan. Within the emergency meetings that have occupied the head honchos of Iberia with a question of what to do with the Algerian situation, a solution has thankfully emerged. Ambassador Moreira has come up with a plan that hopefully avoid unneeded bloodshed while securing our position within Algeria. Moreira's plan has managed to out win out in the proceedings and has given the all clear by the Cadillus as the best way to solve the Algerian situation. Moreira's plan. Involved, involves easing tensions in the region in order to avoid a conflict and the inevitable drain of manpower uh, and resources that the war will cause, and instead, of all the branch will be instead extended to Italy with the goal of a joint partnership in Algeria. It will be tough road ahead and there will be compromise, but hopefully we should not be bogged down in a long land war in the region. It's time to start up the negotiations and see if this, if we can solidify our place within Algeria through peaceful means. Plans for Algeria. In the modern age, military glory was becoming increasingly rare and difficult to come by. Even as militaries all around the world can continue to cease us to grow, the advent of the nuclear bomb and the resulting global stalemate seemed to all but halt the ambitions of those who make mark their place in the history throughout conquest. And likewise, when force of arms fail, great men of silver tongues and wily diplomacy would often step up to the plate, but in these modern times, it seems like every rock, every blade of grass, and every grain of sand is owned by somebody somewhere no one was interested in selling. The rubble was as small as it was ever going to be, and no one saw value in losing the corner of it. That's when, why when the Cadillos called the greatest military and diplomatic minds of Iberia together, discussed plans for the French colony of Algeria. They came not with vague ideas and concepts, but with papers, with maps, briefcases, books worth of schemes. It was an opportunity that they all knew they'd never again see in their lifetime, the chance to be as known as a conqueror, through guns or through the words of Algeria. The journals come with grand campaigns and elaborate war plans, some even go as far as to invade Tunis and Libya, should the Italians stand in their way. Diplomats cracked open briefcases to reveal grand schemes and plans to buy or swindle the Italians half of Algeria out of, from beneath their feet. When the Cadillos made the call for all spheres of Iberia to form a plan together, they instead got a rapid and long succession of political stale switches. It's going to take a while to do. Two plans remain. The moon was gazing down upon the military HQ of Madrid when the Cadillos finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. After discarding the obvious losers and then the less obvious losers, the Cadillos were left with two plans to decide between, among the generals. Cazula de Ariga, Ariaga's scheme had the most support, a limited war with the added benefit of looking towards the white French colonials in Algeria for support, and the creation of a cooperative government with them in the process. The Cazula plan, as it has been called since they first presented it to the Cadillos, calls for open warfare in Algeria, to simultaneously drive out the Italians to pass by the natives in all one false swoop. The journals of rallied beyond the Cazula plan and already believed that Salazar will support them. Meanwhile, among the diplomats, Adrian the Moreira's plan had proven to be the most attractive. Rather than approaching the Italian government directly, which would require a great deal of expense to acquire the Italian half of the region, it proposes that Iberia should instead approach the Italian oil joint ENI. If they can convince the ENI to support the Iberian claims of Algeria in exchange for a generous deal on oil developments in the region, the ENI could turn in, in turn put much more intense pressure on Italy to accept the Iberian claim. The other diplomats and politicians have abandoned their own rejected plan to support the Moreira plan and hope that Franco will support them in turn. Our stage is set. I don't know, we've already decided we're going to go with this one. Muscovine's disillusion. Oh, goodbye, Muscovine. They're going to explode and cause all sorts of crappy issues. But could in disagreement like normal. It was midday when Salazar entered the meeting room. Normally, they would have a, have a meeting so oddly, but Franco had requested he enter once he had fully collected his thoughts on the adjourned issue, and not one moment earlier or later. Sadly, what this meant was that Franco had to dedicate nearly the entire day to waiting for whenever his counterpart finally got around to attending. He was thankful, and then, as they showed up shortly after lunch, as expected, Salazar well, got to talking as soon as he closed the door behind him. I had to see everything. I've made up my mind Algeria needs to be secured, and at any cost, it doesn't matter. We need to guarantee that Retornado is a home. Franco began to open his mouth to respond, but Salazar snapped him at first. Don't start about pragmatism to me. Not about this. Those Retornados were exiled from their homes once already. I'd rather die than let them be kicked out again, and so soon after the first time. Ariaga's plan will guarantee them their home, and will make sure those Italian dudes recognize it. 
Franco has sighed, have grunted in annoyance. I can't fault you for being passionate about your people, but you are refusing to see the larger picture. We need peace in Algeria. War will win them land, maybe, but when the but then where will we be when they all die fighting for it? What good would it do, Salazar? He, Salazar started, started a response, getting out perhaps a half a word before Franco interrupted him. Whatever we settle on, just remember, it needs to be unanimous. We need to look like a unified front. The future of Algeria. Franco was in the same room again the time. This time reclined in a seat next to Salazar. He spared a glance to his colleague, who was more focused on the plans before him, before returning his gaze to Kazula and Moera, who seemed more concerned with shuffling through the things. Eventually, they both pre prepared to present, but Kazula was mandated to go first. He spoke loud, the boisterous tone that showed his total confidence in his plans. He didn't have any formal charts or flashy models, but simply passed out two pieces of paper and laid out a map of the conference table, a map of Algeria. He detailed the situation as he saw it, then carefully explained how they could swipe the rest of the country from the Italians. To this end, he also explained the contents of the documents he passed out. They were manifests of the equipment they require optimistically to get the job done. Once Kazula finished, it was time for Moira to present his plan for Algeria. Despite during the war plan briefing, the politician had taken the time to properly set up a presentation, though his delivery left some to be desired. He explained his plan, now working with the ENI, could win Algeria of how to make deals situated look desirable to them. He pointed out the resources that required and how to best use them, with a style of utilizing as little words as possible. As a side of the meeting concluded remarkably quickly, as both sides had finished their presentation, the Cadillos spoke of their verdict. While well, they both made designs to sell their plans, what the two didn't know was that the Cadillos had already both decided. They told the two in their back and forth speech style that nothing but war will help us win. A stronger Franco may improve the outcome of the crisis in Algeria, which I like. Words can win the toughest battles. A stronger Franco may improve the outcome of a, uh, a crisis in Algeria. A stronger Franco would be good. Uh, complete ambassador. Yes. Ah. 70 day focus. Jesus Christ. Retornetos all right. Okay, interesting. More cost. Way, way more cost. Uh, native land. We, of course, should be forgetting about them, uh, the natives over down in Algerian way. Luckily for them, we shan't be abandoning them to their own barbaric rule of tribal and fighting or whatever they were doing before the Europeans came along and said. Though notably, or joy to hear that they'll be given some guided independence from ourselves and the Italians. It would be an act of great tragedy if we were to just leave the natives in their own wrong ways. We'll guide on the true civilizations just as we always have, and they shall be either more grateful for it. Those that resist this act of kindness in their own foolish barbaric notions of self-determination shall be met with the right amount of force in this new Algeria in the same way as the old one. Mattel's oil. There's another matter that needs to be fleshed out between ourselves and the Italians. That concerns the matter of oil. More specifically, the oil wealth of Matai's E and I. We're all too aware of the man's intentions to ravage the region or search for more oil. We need to hash out some kind of terms before the E and I decides upon something without our consent. Matai would be fool would be a fool not to strike some sort of deal with ourselves. We all know that it is in our best interest to share the oil wealth of this very prosperous land. The natives certainly wouldn't know what to do with this, so it is once more up to the Europeans to sort out this in a civilized way, which results in everyone being the winner. There's more than enough oil here for everyone, so hopefully this shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Retornados' rights. If one thing needs to be made certain in this new independent Algeria, it's the rights of the Portuguese retornados. There'd be heck to pay back in a beer for him, Salazar and his cronies if the sailors have been bothered in any way at all. The sailors have been flexing their, op their position recently, and if any hint of uprooting their opposition or positions came up about, they would no doubt kick us up in an ignorable fuss. We don't need the Ar Algerian negotiation to stir up tensions back home, so this is the position we need to stand firm on. We're sure the towns will understand this, though. They have their own white man's burden in the continent that requires there to be a European solar presence in the region. Our negotiators shall hammer home this explanation, and this will likely help us come together on the issue. Captain Galbello speaks out against Cadillos. This morning, shocking news reached the offices of Cadillos. Upon the front pages of the national newspaper was a breaking column. Captain Galbello, a prominent naval officer with a command of a significant vessel in the Iberian fleet, has gone public to national media to speak out, speak out against Cadillos. In this media statement, the captain goes on at length to discuss what he perceives as continual oppression from the Cadillos, a noticeable loss of freedoms across Iberia, and mismanagement of the armed forces due to the status of the high-ranking military officer, and the power he holds the nation's gone to a frenzy over this new breaking news. Can one, one can scarcely appear in public without hearing talk of this breaking headline? Strict rules are placed upon all members. Uh, are placed. They are placed upon all members of the Iberian military, forbidding time, forbidding them to give opinions to the media without strict approval and guidance from public relations personnel or superior officers. Due to this, the testimony that Captain Galileo gave to the media could seem immediately tried by court martial, resulting in dishonorable discharge. To commence such proceedings, we would need to speak to his direct superior officer. However, Captain Galileo's statements appear to be rather popular at the moment, and immediately silencing him might be seen by the public as a move of suppression, furthering the crisis. Letting the issue fester, however, is also far from ideal for the public image of the Cadillos. Ignore it. Well, you got to squash it. Speak to his commanding officer. Meet, meetings with the ENI officials. The best part of the guarding any kind of affluent, affluent figure, the bodyguard reflected, it was the secrets. 
He would never let anyone a uh, word of what he hears during the meetings, not even to his death, but it had become a peculiar hobby of his to collect the secrets mentioned over the conference table. As, anyone, as far as anyone knew, he was maintaining professional posture. What the bodyguard knew and was a little ashamed of was that he bided his time by listening. For the most sensitive matters, he didn't, he didn't do such a thing. He was never aware he could hear anything. Today, the man was nearly sure that this meeting was one of those affairs. With another guard, he was to watch the door and make sure no one else entered. If there was a scuffle, he would stop it. Nothing of that sort happened. Eventually, the door opened. With the businessmen and diplomats filing out, the guard watched him silently before he was given his orders. Come on, we're going to lunch. Os vedos anos. Iberian cinema is dominated by the Spanish-made films, the larger population of Spain, the Spanish speakers in the country. The good size of the majority compared with Lisbon, and the fact that Spanish studios are generally older and have higher budgets has left the Portugal's film industry small and sapped with talent. This week saw the largest release of a movie filmed and produced in Portugal in over a decade. The Green Years, the film tells the story of Julio, a 19-year-old boy who moves from the country into Lisbon, feeling alienated by the city, isolated by his distance from his parents and anxious over his financial prospects. He begins seeing a girl named Ilda, but uh, Ilda. But Julio grows increasingly stressed and paranoid with the relationship falling apart, of course. The Green Years is critically acclaimed and are always regarded, already regarded as an artistic masterpiece of Iberian cinema. The Green Years centers around Julio's attempts to, place a f to find a place for himself in urban society, as well as the harsh realities of everyday life. It stands in contrast to more conventional crime or action dramas, rather than providing the viewer with escapism. It forces the viewer to question their own lives in their own place in society at a time when their very world seems to teeter on the brink of destruction. A different sort of drama reminiscent of Italian films and Jardim's ambition. The transition to this new Algerian state will have to be a smooth one. In order to ensure this, Jadim will need to be bought off in some way in order to make sure he doesn't ruin the whole thing for us and the Italians. He may be feeling somewhat bitter about the ambiguity of his position in the new state, so we'll have to bribe the ambitious dude before he does anything that puts this whole thing in jeopardy. It's likely to be some sort of thing that can placate him. Something big, no doubt. A ministerial position, and an important one at that, will have to be considered. It's a necessary necessity, though. We can't afford it for all the negotiations to be far not, for naught, and for there ought to be conflict anyway. Let's just hope that we're matching whatever Jadim's dreams are. Secret meetings. In order to hash out the most intrinsic, important, and excruciating details of the plan for the new Algeria, a number of secret meetings are occurring between the diplomatic delegations of Iberia and Italy. The very best and most important figures for both sides are to be meet in some extremely tight-knit hush-hush talks. These meetings will likely be the defining point of the negotiations period. It will likely be where it's decided where we plan this with plan can go ahead or it's dead in the water. The distrust in the air between the diplomats is palatable. Even then, after all this time, it's clear that the two nations do not trust each other. So much has happened over the short period of time recently. In times as heavy and war happy and chaotic as these, opportunities arise and the cases are different. Each side may have its deliberate saboteurs who do not wish for the outcome of these meetings to be on a pleasant one. God knows what is truly occurring in all these meetings, but God help the region if it all turns out for the worse. Commanding officer supports Caveo. Since Captain Calveo recently went public with his descent against the Cadillos, uh, the Cadillos have sent a rejoined request to his director, Spear, a rear admiral in the Iberian Navy, to begin to undertake the necessary measures to court martial Captain Calveo for his unapproved and inflammatory comments upon the Cadillos. The reply from a superior officer, which arrived to the office of the Cadillos in a letter, is far from the compliance we was expected. Cadillos, Franco, and Salazar. It has come to my attention that the government seeks disciplinary action upon my well subordinate, Captain Calveo, for his comments which have noticeably upset the Cadillos. I wish to dispel any notions that the captain acts independently and without approval. As the direct superior of Captain Galveo, I can attest that these statements given to the Iberian media were not the sole opinions of one individual. I can further attest to that. Due to my approval of all these statements, I do not find Captain Galveo in direct breach of any media outreach policies, and as such, I shall not be seeking disciplinary action against him. Sincerely, Contra Almerento Valerio. It's treason them! But, unfortunately, we are going to end the episode there as we slowly see uh, our debt to GDP getting worse, but inflation is getting slightly more under control, and our growth rate is actually improving. So, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll see the Germans, hopefully someone winning this civil war, and us, hopefully not butchering Iberia. Thanks for watching, have a great Iberian rest of your day.